I'm off to the United States next month, so I need some US dollars. Now, I could change some money at my local currency exchange and I'd get 57 cents on the dollar. I could also go to my local bank and get 59 cents on the dollar. But you know what I do every single time I go overseas? I go straight to WISE, a global powerhouse in foreign exchange that I've been using for years. They give me a rate of over 60 cents on the dollar and I can safely access all of my cash through their Visa card and their app. I've moved literally tens of thousands of dollars through them all over the world since 2015. There is a lot for us to get through, so let's get into it. Let's set the scene. 13 years ago, banks used to deduct as much as 5% in fees on currency conversion. They offered low exchange rates and high fees, and it was a very profitable model. In 2017, Santander, a British bank, admitted that WISE charges 84% less in money transfer fees. WISE was founded in London in 2011 by two expats that were sick of paying such high fees to repatriate money back to Estonia. Since then, WISE has grown into a multi-billion dollar company with over 4,000 staff and operations in over 70 countries. Listed on the London Stock Exchange, they're worth over £7 billion. In New Zealand terms, they'd be the fourth most valuable company on our stock exchange. So WISE is a powerhouse in this market. They also have some big names backing them, including Peter Thiel, who invested in 2013, and Richard Branson in 2014. They're regulated by the Australian Securities and Investments Commission, authorised as a deposit taker by APRA, and they hold an Australian financial services license. So WISE upholds the highest standards in Australasia when it comes to regulatory oversight. You can also activate virtual one-off cards, use Apple Pay, use two-factor authentication, and get notifications through their app when the card is used. So WISE have invested in making their platform safe for users. So what differentiates WISE from the banks? The biggest factor, of course, is fees. But to understand why that's the case, we need to understand the mid-market rate. Banks buy and sell currency at different prices. The rate between these two prices is the mid-market rate. It's the rate you see when you look up an exchange rate on Google. The difference between what the bank is offering you and the mid-market rate is their margin, and they apply this both sides of the mid-market rate. Wise uses the mid-market rate for buying and selling currency without the margin added. They make money on the fee shown here only. So let's run an example. If I want a thousand US dollars, Wise would require 1,664 New Zealand dollars, including a fee of $6.15. Westpac, a local bank here in New Zealand, charges between $36 and $48 more than WISE for the same trade. The rate offered is lower by 1.3 cents per dollar, and the fee can be as high as $16 versus WISE's six. It really isn't a comparison, and when I'm on holiday, I won't have to carry thousands of dollars in cash with the risk of losing it. So who is WISE useful for? If you spend in foreign currencies at all, WISE is the best way to do it. It's also a great tool to lock in an exchange rate at any time. If you are traveling to another country, WISE is great as you can load up the card before leaving. You don't even need to convert the currency before going, as WISE will automatically convert in real time for you. For example, if my WISE only has Australian dollars in it, and I'm eating at a restaurant in Spain, I don't need to worry, as WISE will automatically convert the currency when I tap my card to pay. If you shop online, in the US dollar, from the likes of Amazon, WISE can save you lots. Thirdly, if you need to pay someone in a foreign currency, WISE allows you to pay straight to their bank account. For example, if I have a friend in England that needs a few quid, I can send some their way within a couple hours, no problem. And finally, if you require a local bank account in any of these currencies, WISE allows you to create a local bank account. You get a bank account number, just like a local, so you can start receiving payments just like normal. WISE really does it all. From my account, I've bought flights from American Airlines. I've spent my way around Melbourne. I've also paid for some business expenses in the United States and a scattering of expenses in Dubai and India. The card is very versatile and anyone spending foreign currency will find it useful. So what currencies does WISE handle? You can load your WISE account with 23 currencies with all the major ones covered. Once your money is in WISE, you can store over 40 different currencies and convert money freely between them. This all happens at the mid-market rate. WISE also allows you to specify the rate you'd like to convert at. So if you have a target rate, 
you can have Wise automatically convert once the price rises to your preferred rate. And finally, you can send money into 73 currencies. So Wise is useful for anyone spending foreign currency. It's cheaper and more convenient than a bank, and it handles all of the world's major currencies. How does the card work? The Wise card allows you to access your Wise account from almost anywhere in the world. If they accept Visa, your Wise card will work. If you are shopping, you can insert the card, you can swipe it, or you can tap it, just like at home. You can also add the card to your Apple, Samsung, and Google Pay devices. If you need cash, Wise also allow you to withdraw cash from an ATM. I tested this in India and faced no issues. Wise do have limits on this, however, as you can see here, so that's something to be aware of. Every calendar month, you get two free ATM withdrawals, after which the fixed fee takes effect. The variable fee kicks in for any withdrawals in excess of the amounts shown here. For example, if I withdraw $50 in the US, I'll pay no fees twice. The third time that I withdraw $50, I will be charged both a fixed and a variable fee. Even with a regular bank card, these charges are common, but at least we get the WISE exchange rate when we use WISE. In the WISE app, we can do a few things with the card. Here is my physical card, and from the app, I can show my PIN, see my card details, or freeze the card, which is useful if it's lost or stolen. We can also specify the permitted transactions using the card and do things like setting card limits to prevent overspending. Heading back up, we can also store a digital or virtual card. For those that are unfamiliar, these are useful if you need to use your card at an unsafe place or hand over your card details to someone. Unlike your physical card, it is much easier to freeze a digital card if it falls into the wrong hands without needing to replace the physical card as well. The card makes using WISE much more convenient and I wouldn't travel anywhere without it. So how have I been using WISE personally? Since 2015, I've been using WISE for my personal use. While living in Singapore, WISE was the main way of moving funds between Singapore and New Zealand. When I moved back in 2019, I moved tens of thousands of dollars using the service between my Singapore and my New Zealand bank accounts. In 2022, I traveled around Singapore, Malaysia, and Thailand without more than a couple hundred bucks in local cash. Everything was on the card, and if I needed cash, I could use any old ATM and not get ripped off in fees. Last year, I traveled to India twice and also went around Dubai. I could swipe my card everywhere. Hotels, shops, you name it. McDonald's in second tier Indian cities, no problem, I could tap my card to pay, just like Visa Flash Pay at home. Heading to the US next month, it's no different. I have over $5,000 locked and loaded to go. I'm not even going to bother changing more than a couple hundred bucks in cash as a backup. With all the pros I've mentioned, surely there's some disadvantages to WISE. Of course, and the main one is probably the lack of physical branches. If you have a problem with the card, you'll need to go onto their website and either request an email or a phone call from the WISE team. Their website states they aim to reply to emails within a day. So this is much less convenient than just picking up the phone and calling your bank. Another disadvantage is the gaps in currencies covered. Just 40 or so from the 118 global currencies can be stored within WISE. And though it covers the main ones, this may be an issue for some users. The Taiwan dollar, for example, is not covered. And finally, WISE has a few limits to be aware of. Within the app, some of these can be increased, but it can still be a pain for some heavier users. If you like the look of WISE and you want to save fees on your first transaction of up to £500, make sure to check out my link down below. Signing up also gives you the option to receive a free WISE card in the post, which can take up to a couple weeks to arrive. If you like this video and want to see more content just like it, please make sure to subscribe to my channel down below to see all of my future content in the personal finance and investing space. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.